Hey folks, good morning. Uh, this is The Main Prepper and today we are continuing our series on self-defense uh, with the shotgun. It'll be a part one and part two, very similar uh, to the design I used for part one and part two uh, battle rifle. This first one we're going to give a little bit of a concept and an overview, but before I begin, uh, welcome aboard to all the new subscribers, especially those who have just come in from AR15.com. Um, it's a great website and I use it quite frequently as a research tool so that I can get good information and also you have a question sometimes you can go over there and just look and you'll find on their blogs or on the forums that there are already answers to some very uh, qu uh, good questions and questions that I didn't even think maybe other people would ask but you start typing it in the search engine and there it is and it goes, takes you to AR15.com half the time. So just go over there, have a look, uh, subscribe join and donate. Uh, and here's something I wanted to also say on that note. Uh, imagine my surprise when the owner of AR15.com, uh, the website, uh, contacted me by PM and asked if he could mention uh, this channel. And of course, absolutely, I appreciate it. And uh, I'm very grateful uh, also for AR15.com's uh, staunch support of the Second Amendment uh, and our other God-given rights. We should never take that for granted, uh, by the way. We have to, uh, eternal vigilance is the price of liberty. And that vigilance isn't just uh, being a well-armed people uh, necessary to defense of our republic, but rather uh, it's also a people that are involved in uh, what's going on in the world and the community around them. Uh, we can't just pull back and dig a hole and pull it in behind us. Oh, so welcome aboard uh, to the new folks. I am so happy uh, that all the training and the experiences uh, that I've been through uh, have more value uh, to more than just me. I, frankly, as I get close to retirement, I was thinking, well, um, I'll be okay living up there in my little place in Maine. And um, But, gosh, all this stuff I know uh, seems kind of a waste. Uh, I wonder if anybody else would be interested in knowing it. Certainly, I think maybe a few. And it's been actually uh, overwhelming the response so thank you uh, to all of you who have subscribed but more so to those of you that have uh, been such a great support um, I have learned uh, a lot and I remember fondly uh, the people who took the time to teach me and I hope that I can pass on the things that I learned from them on that note uh, if you know any older people in your area you should get to know them uh, especially in your town uh, the people that have been around a long time I was taught to revere folks with silver hair because their words are like gold. Now, um, I know that from my little town that I live in, and not even been there very long, just speaking with the folks that have been around has given me a tremendous insight, and the ground that I stand on is all the more rich because of that. Folks, uh, I had some interesting comments earlier on this self-defense series, and while I won't share particulars, uh, one troubling theme uh, keeps coming up, and that's the idea that you're going to be going up against uh, poorly armed onesies and twosies. Uh, and folks, uh, I have to say this with a heavy heart. Uh, this makes me sad because this is not uh, realistic. When I see people make these comments, I see a human being who may go out and get themselves killed. Uh, I see them being overwhelmed, finding themselves uh, pinned down and in a bad situation, uh, uh, poorly armed, uh, and discovering too late that they have made a tragic mistake. I, Folks, I have seen people killed uh, uh, who gambled their life on a bad theory. They made a bad choice and they paid for it with their lives. Uh, this is not uh, uh, a video game. I uh, hope we never get into it, but if it does go this way, uh, or if you find yourself in a situation, a raw situation anywhere in the world, uh, it can be uh, fatal, the uh, consequences. I have seen the broken bodies. I have seen them put into body bags, uh, and I realize uh, sometimes uh, it just was unavoidable. But other times when I get the whole story, uh, it's tragic when you realize that yeah, this was avoidable. Look at these websites out here, folks, uh, speaking of onesies and twosies poorly armed. Look at these websites out here selling all of this tactical gear. I don't mean just the nylon fear gear. I'm talking about uh, really nice weapons. 
uh, the internetguncatalog.com, uh, for instance. Uh, they're not just selling a couple of those weapons, or they wouldn't be making them. Uh, you can't make one or two rifles and make any money unless you're selling them for hundreds of thousands of dollars. They sell in mass quantities. Okay, so first of all, pay attention to that. Uh, the second thing is, uh, look at all the ammo that's being bought by people, and not just in 20-round uh, boxes. Look at how much of the thousand round lots they are selling and notice many times they are sold out uh, especially for the tactical calibers pay attention to that that should be an indicator uh, what the FBI likes to call a clue that maybe more than a handful of people are really into owning weapons and shooting now who is buying all this stuff you think it's all just preppers no uh, in fact, it's not the military or the government either. Uh, we buy uh, mil-spec ammo. Uh, it's not that stuff you get, no offense to the cheaper than dirty other folks, but uh, our stuff has to be uh, very, very, very uh, high uh, quality standards. Uh, and as such, uh, it's out of the price range for most uh, people, unless you get discontinued or the seconds, the stuff that the uh, military has rejected, but it's still good quality. Uh, in a word, who's buying all this? Well, it's the unprepared. Now, see my video series uh, up here on uh, threats to preppers. Uh, these are the people buying this stuff. Uh, these folks will snicker, they will mock, and they will sneer at preppers, but uh, even they uh, smell something isn't right in the world, and they uh, have plans uh, to prepare. And that plan does not include making sacrifices up front, uh, sacrificing not going to the movies or taking the Alaskan cruise or buying jewelry or going to the tanning booth or driving a sports car uh, so that they can instead put that money into putting back food and seeds and the other things they might need during a very difficult time. Instead, their preparation plan is to figure out where you are and come out with their high dollar uh, weapons that they have trained very well on and just kill you and take what you have or just hold you up at gunpoint. Uh, I hate to be so blunt and I don't want to sound paranoid, but uh, that's what it gets down to. When people get hungry, uh, they become desperate. And desperate people do desperate things. Uh, I've seen this in survival school. Somebody that's a very facilitating and easygoing person, when you cut off the food supply for three, four days, they start getting pretty ugly and combative and aggressive uh, about getting some chow. Okay, so everybody can have all their uh, their persona and their act, uh, but you find out what folks are really made of when they get desperate, and most people will become desperate when they get in desperate spot. Okay, uh, look, look folks, they're not coming after you with a baseball bat uh, or a pellet gun. They're coming after you with a modern battle rifle and some serious training on it. Uh, so don't presume uh, that you're covered with, uh, if you've got a whole bolt-action rifle, sorry. Now I've seen civil wars, I've seen civilian on civilian violence in Rawl, uh, in combat zones. And it's ugly, and when they get their little chow skimmers on a main battle rifle, they go after their neighbors who don't have one, uh, especially if they've got old blood views to settle. Uh, the ones who are unarmed always lose. The ones who are armed with a good battle rifle and know how to use it, they wind up ruling the world. Uh, I saw that stuff all the time. They'd be getting it on, man, uh, right outside the compound one night. Uh, red on red violence, man. They were shooting at each other. And I told my guys, the whole fire. Uh, I got up on, literally, I got up on the uh, on the wall that we were behind. I said, uh, hold, check fire, check fire. Because we don't know who the good guys are and who the bad guys are there. Uh, and we ain't just shooting them. Uh, unfortunately, none of them shot each other because they're poor shots at night. Uh, but that being said, uh, that's an illustration of one minor incident. Uh, I never saw any bolt-action rifles being used, folks, uh, in those situations, but then maybe uh, those people were already dead by the time we got there. If you cannot get anything but a bolt-action rifle, look, uh, then it is what it is, okay? Make do with what you got. Uh, if, however, you can do better, please do better. In Iraq, the military was, uh, that's us, we were a little busy with other things, and so the civilians were kind of left on their own. Uh, the police disbanded. Uh, the military, uh, they went home, uh, and we were paying them to stay there for a while, and that's good. Kidnappings and murders were so commonplace that we found bodies laying on the roadside almost every time we went out for a while. And uh, the AK-47 was cheap and plentiful over there. You could get them on the black market for 50 bucks uh, back in 03, 04. 
as Saddam issued out thousands of them uh, in an effort to arm the populace so they could become insurgents and rise up against the Americans. And some did. Uh, the insurgents who wanted to fight, though, they quickly learned that just having a modern battle rifle does not make you a warrior. Uh, it takes a lot of training and discipline to do that. Not to mention the fact that the military they were tangling with, we had air power, we had artillery, smart weapons, not observation devices, C2, which is command and control, uh, electronic warfare, and more. Uh, we lived with the Kurds, and they were an ethnic minority in the area we operated in, and they knew it. They were all armed with AKs, and at a minimum, but they also had PKMs and other stuff around, and we knew about that. Uh, we knew they were snagging whatever they could. We didn't blame them either. They had suffered a lot under the previous regime. In self-defense, combat or otherwise, it is important to be the winner, because second place is usually awarded posthumously. That's dead. Uh, being capable means properly armed, properly trained, and properly motivated. Today we'll talk about being properly armed uh, a bit more and what that means. And I don't want us to lose uh, too much focus before I begin. So let me just say this tactical aspect, again, is probably going to be uh, one-tenth of one percent of the time, if that. Uh, if you get it wrong, though, it'll be the second place award. So even though it's a tiny fraction of your time, uh, the importance is enormous. Now, I wish we could have a peaceful utopia. I really do. Uh, I want nothing more than to live an independent and self-sufficient life, dependent on God and my neighbors, uh, and not on the rest of the world. I want to grow my own crops and uh, raise my animals for my own food. I want to be able to uh, keep bees and tap maple trees, uh, hunt and fish, and to live in harmony on my beautiful place. It would be so easy to pretend that the world is not full of danger in my little isolated part of the world. But even there, in that place, uh, this beautiful place, if you haven't seen it, uh, that God gave me, I know the storm of trouble can blow in quickly. I know it is even more critical for many of you. So many of you are becoming friends, and I see you living in cities and suburbs. And I will not, for the sake of entertainment or convenience, uh, skip this issue and leave you in danger. I will endeavor to teach you and encourage you to be prepared. Uh, Karl von Clausewitz said, to ensure the peace, prepare for war. And bullies, thugs, and tyrants are cowards, and they always target the weak. Just having guns, though, isn't enough. Uh, you need to make wise choices because we cannot buy every gun in the world, nor can we afford to entertain fantasies about what we can do with them. As I shared earlier, the three guns I recommend are battle rifle, shotgun, and pistol in that order. Uh, with a caveat, hold on. Many people can't quite come up with the money for the battle rifle, uh, or at least not a good one, but make the mistake of buying either a really poor substitute for one, a bolt action, or uh, they buy a pistol first because they presume uh, the rifle being uh, more expensive than the pistol, uh, you've got two choices. But uh, it's actually not accurate. In fact, a pistol has the lowest uh, dollar to firepower ratio out there. Uh, the interim is a shotgun. We're going to delve into the shotgun in greater detail and discuss a lot of myths and also display its strengths and weaknesses. It's not a one-size-fits-all, do-all type weapon, but it is a pretty good one. Uh, mostly because of the price. We'll cover that in a second. Well, I prefer my battle rifle in a fight. If I didn't have the money for one, I would buy a shotgun. Uh, that being said, if I this is my caveat. If I lived in a crime-infested area, such as I did when I was in college, I would get a concealed carry permit and put a high priority on that and getting myself a pistol, at least a 9mm or larger. A 380 is a little bit on the small side. Uh, folks, I had one for a long time, I know. Uh, I confess that before they had the CCW, uh, the permit uh, in Texas, I carried, uh, and that's illegal. But I would rather uh, go to jail uh, in that instance uh, than to go to the morgue, and that's the only time uh, I ever pulled a pistol out was to prevent the latter from happening. However, if you do not need a CCW and you cannot afford the $400 uh, for a pistol or more for a, a rifle, uh, the shotgun it represents the best, a 12-gauge pump shotgun represents the best uh, value, firepower to dollar-wise, because for $175 uh, I bought a shotgun here, and there is a video for it, uh, I bought that shotgun. 
uh, hunting Harrington and Richardson partner. Uh, it's a Remington clone. It's tough, durable, and ugly. And it kicks like a mule and has a loud action on it and an even louder report. Uh, and that is all fine and dandy because uh, all we wanted to do is uh, be able to shoot a very lethal 12 gauge projectile out the front end of the barrel. I was able to take it home immediately, and I bought several boxes of shells on the way home from uh, Walmart, uh, Double Lock Buck and Slug. If you don't know what all those are, uh, don't worry, we're going to cover that. Uh, and don't feel bad, because I didn't know until somebody told me either. On that note, please remember, uh, when I do comparisons here, I'm talking about prices for new weapons, and they usually come from a single source, okay? Uh, if you can find them cheaper, great, that's good for you, but please don't say that my comparison is inaccurate because your Uncle Bob sold you a Kimber Classic for $5, and therefore uh, pistols are $5. Well, no, that's, uh, that's an unusual circumstance that you found yourself in, and good for you, by the way. And if your Uncle Bob is willing, I'd, be like to, I'd like to be adopted. Thank you. Maybe for uh, you this worked, but for the rest of the people out there, I'm just trying to give a benchmark. Uh, new price to new price, same quality to same quality. Uh, I won't compare a bolt action rifle to a, a semi-auto in price, nor will I compare a 12-gauge uh, break-open shotgun single shot with a 12-gauge pump uh, in price. It's apples to apples. Folks, thank you for tuning in today, and the next uh, video on self-defense will be on uh, the shotgun, and we're going to get into specifics, and we're going to look at a little ballistics data, types of shells out there, types of shotguns, and you're going to find that you can get a very decent shotgun for 175 bucks or so, and uh, have yourself uh, armed with an extremely uh, powerful and lethal weapon, and you could literally pick it up uh, tonight. Before you do anything, uh, go see uh, Hickok 45's um, video on gun safety. I cannot stress that one enough. Thank you, folks. This has been Main Prepper. Look forward to seeing you all back. And again, welcome to all my new subs, especially those of you that came in from AR15.com. And everybody, welcome to the adventure.